is up, people of the internet? It's your favorite theory crafter, Skizzers here, bringing you a brand new guide for D.Va. Um, just wanted to give a big shout out to everybody real quick. Uh, for the support over the last video, the Alarak guide, if you haven't seen that, it is on the channel. And uh, I, I just had, like, I was blown away by the by the support you guys gave gave me on that guide. It, uh, it, was, it was very, very cool to see a lot of people watching it and then reading the comments and and the messages I received, just very cool, and I just want to thank everybody again for the support on that. Uh, as you can see, the top right-hand corner, right up there, um, we are now partnering with StormLegacy.com. Great place to go get all your Heroes of the Storm action and content for everything. I definitely recommend checking them out. These guides will also be posted on their YouTube page, and sometimes uh, the guides might be on their page before I put them on my page. Uh, I'm going to be dual uploading them still, so you, uh, these guys will still be on this channel, but just so you guys are aware, they will be uploaded to Storm Legacy as well. Please go give them a, a look and you know check out what they have going on. They have some very, very cool shows that they do on Twitch, and yeah, go check out StormLegacy.com. We're partnering up with them once again. Big shout out to them. Amazing, amazing group of people over there. Now, uh, I have timestamps in the description if you want to skip through the rest of the kind of introduction to the hero and you want to just skip to the talents or whatever, timestamps will be down below in the description as well. So kicking things off here, D.Va is a ranged warrior, kind of more in the bruiser role, can tank pretty well, but more in that kind of bruiser role, uh, really good at just being a nuisance to the enemy team. So we're going to go over her basic abilities real quick and then go from there. So first off, Diva works a lot like she does in Overwatch where uh, when the mech dies, when this health bar goes away, you pop out of the mech suit and you are essentially a new hero um, with, with a much, much smaller health bar. So you need to kind of be wary that once you're jumping out, you're very, very vulnerable to actually getting killed. Um, the mech provides half of a kill in XP, and D.Va provides another half of a kill in XP. So if you kill D.Va and her mech, that's one full death of XP. Her trait is mech mode. When D.Va's mech dies, she is ejected out after 0.75 seconds and can continue to fight. D.Va's mech only awards 50% of the normal hero's experience upon dying. So basically what I just explained. D.Va has no mana, and she's just completely based on cooldowns, so keep that in mind when using her to just be aware that it's just a cooldown based. Um, your Z, which is usually your mount, is mecha out, while in her mech, D.Va can shoot while moving, but her movement speed is reduced. Basically doesn't have a mount, but in pilot mode she does have a, a regular standard mount. So we're going to go over her basic abilities now. First basic ability is called Boosters. Cooldown is 10 seconds, increases D.Va's movement speed by 125% for 2 seconds. Enemies that are hit take X damage depending on the level and are knocked away. D.Va cannot be slowed while Boosters are active. So uh, Boosters is kind of your main get around tool. Uh, I'll demonstrate it right now. Now your main get around tool where you just get to fly and drive around. I'll toggle the cooldowns on so I can show you a few times here. Just gives you the option to kind of be able to fly around and and get places pretty quickly. I'll show you the knockback on our good friend Training Dummy Chaos here. So it's pretty it's a pretty minor knockback. Um, it only goes so far. You can't continue to push it or anything. But uh, the the main way you see this used in games is Diva will fly into somebody from around so you'll kind of take like this arcing angle this hook and then kind of fly back to where it's safe so if your team's over where i am currently you might be using your boosters like that where you're going to kind of knock them back into your team and then you're also a little bit safer in that regard now you are in danger during this portion but you can't be slowed and Typically, you're okay during <laughs> during that portion of, of your boosters. Nobody really ever stops Eva's you. Eva's next basic ability is Defense Matrix. Cooldown is 10 seconds. Channels a defensive field in the target direction for 3 seconds, reducing the damage dealt by enemy heroes inside by 75%. The mech can move while channeling, but cannot turn. That's very important to note, by the way. Damage dealt to the mech from enemies within Defense Matrix still grants the same amount of self-destruct charge so that's your e and we'll go over that in a, in a minute here so with defense matrix um why i say it's very important to note that you can't turn 
is you need to be able to place your defense matrix in a spot where you can keep the enemies in the whole time. So if the enemies are kind of in this area, and you drop defense matrix, you're going to want to move with them. So if they're like chasing your teammate, like your teammate's running towards you from the right to the left, enemies are chasing them, you might want to drop this and just kind of hold the enemies as best you can within the defense matrix. And there's a lot of other really good uses for defense matrix. I'll be showing some clips towards the end or maybe in at some point in the discussion kind of going over some, some of the ways you can you can use these abilities kind of going a little more in depth on on the following section so divas e is self-destruct eject from the mech setting it to self-destruct after four seconds deals x damage to large x damage and a large area depending on distance from the center only deals 50% damage against structures, and you gain 1% charge for every 2 seconds spent basic attacking, and 30% charge per 100% of mech health loss. So if your mech dies, you gain 30 of it, 30% charge. And uh, we'll be able to combo a little bit easier to get self-destruct up more often on some traits, or some talents we're going to be going on. Um, but self destructs pretty self-explanatory. You hit E. He says, nerf this. You are now a new hero. And the mech blows up. Okay with me. So with D.Va pilot mode, um, this is the pilot mode trait, I'll go over that right now. Pilot mode basic attacks reduce the cooldown of mech by 0.5 seconds as a pilot D.Va only awards 50% of normal hero experience upon dying, kind of what I went over at the beginning. And then you have a regular summon mount. We no can ride your, ride your mount. Um, by default, your ulti is locked. You don't have an a W but you can t spec into it and you don't have a Q but you can also spec into it. Your E will always be to call down your mech and it's your way to get back into the mech so it's your way to become a tank again. So you're basically a lot more of an assassin in this. You can't attack while moving but you do attack pretty quickly so you can stutter step pretty effectively. So D.Va uh, pilot mode does put out a good amount of damage and there's a lot of times we can bait an enemy just uh just enough to make them overextend where when you pop out of mech mode and go into pilot mode you can just finish them off um there's also a lot of baiting tricks that i will be showing using pilot diva and then allowing uh the enemy to overextend thinking they can kill you since you're pilot diva mode and then resulting in their death instead so to hop back into the mech you just hit e again it calls it in and boom, now you're right back in the mech mode. So that covers D.Va's basic abilities. Now I'm just going to show you some clips over here on the right, kind of going in-depth a little bit more onto what you can really do with these different abilities and how you can combo. So with boosters, you're going to be able to um, push and knock back enemies like I had mentioned before. It's a great escape tool. It's a great uh, engage tool. It's a great way to just kind of get around the map. So boosters has a lot of different uses and you can see some of those on the right side right here with these clips. Self-destruct's pretty self-explanatory as far as getting self-destruct hits. Uh, you can see me using it to zone a lot of the time and uh, th things of that nature. It's pretty hard to get a self-destruct hit off unless you combo it with ETC or Azaria. Um, Graviton Surge, I believe, is her pull-in ulti. And so those are like the two main ones you'll, you'll be comboing for self-destruct, but I typically have been using it as a zoning tool. What I mean by that is the AoE that this thing covers is huge. Like, that that's a large AoE. So when you're dropping self-destruct, you can use it to block off choke points or escapes, and then the enemy team has to come into your team. So I don't really use it for damage. I use it more as just like area denial. Uh, sometimes they'll walk into it and walk past it, but then they're putting themselves at risk if one of your teammates has a stun or a pull or anything. Uh, one combo you can do, and the main one D.Va has, is hitting your Q and then hitting your E. So you can s use your boosters while self-destruct's active um, if you boost before. So if you, if you hit self-destruct and then hit boost, you'll go into pilot mode, then you won't have your boost anymore. But if you boost first and then self-destruct, you can have the mech fly whatever distance you want and you can always hit Q to cancel your boosters. So typically you can hit Q at any point to cancel boosters. You don't have to wait for the full duration. Comboing this, you can hit Q and send your mech flying somewhere else. Blow up. Or if you only need your mech to travel this far instead of going all the way to the gate, you can hit your boost, eject, cancel your boosters, and you can stop the mech wherever you need it to stop in order for it to blow up. 
So that's one of the main combo pieces uh, you can do for that. So Diva's so. basic attacks come out pretty fast, and the basic attacks continue in this uh, rectangle, and any enemies within this rectangle get hit. So you just want to make sure you keep... Um, the turning happens automatically. You just want to make sure you keep the enemy within that rectangle. And if you get it towards the end there, right on this part, it won't... Uh, they'll stop targeting. So you just want to kind of keep them within that that range, and Diva will kind of do everything else. You can also hit H to stop firing completely, and you can hit S to stop moving, but you'll continue shooting. So if there are enemies fighting here, so you're down, you're going to be down here with your team, and you guys are fighting this team up here, and this is, let's just say this is the only way out, is this little point, okay? Instead of trying to drop your E in the middle here, trying to hit them all, you can boost, launch it, and then stop it back here, so now they can't actually escape from that direction. You've cut off that area, area denial, um, is, why, is what I was saying earlier about how the mech is very, very strong in that regard. So now let's get into D.Va's talents. So at level one, um, you really can choose any of these options. I have been basically 10 out of 10 times going hit the nitrous. Um, and for those who didn't watch the Alarak video, what I typically do is go over my main talent choice and then my flex picks and then kind of ignoring the ones I never go. So I really don't use any of these other ones besides hit the nitrous so I'll just explain hit the nitrous and then I'll explain a little bit of where these other ones can be useful but I won't really go too in depth with them. So hit the nitrous at level 1. Initial speed of boosters increased to 475% then decays to normal boost over uh, 0.5 seconds. During this time boosters deal 100 extra damage. Now. I grab this one, one for the initial burst speed, and two, the extra damage kind of becomes a semi-okay nuke late game, and I've secured a few kills just because I had hit the nitrous where you can really chase somebody down and get that extra damage in. So I'll show you from this kind of arcing point to this arcing point how fast your regular booster is. Okay, so once again, how fast regular booster is. Alright, now if you go hit the nitrous, you go a lot faster, a lot faster. That initial um, 0.5 seconds that you have is crazy. Like, you can catch up to any hero, it's a surprise hit every time, you have extra damage. It's like at 20, you just turned your Q from a 296 damage ability which is a decent hit so we'll just say 300 for for some round numbers to a little under 600 damage you know you're doing 600 damage just about with your Q now on every enemy that you hit so you can imagine if you're in a team fight and there's a bunch of people here you're shooting at some dude you could hit this and just boost into everybody you're gonna dodge stuff just because of the speed in general you have so many options to, to get out engage so that's why I like hit the nitrous Personally, it's my go-to level 1 talent. Uh, Rushdown is really good for booster use in non-combat. So if it's a really large map and you're just trying to get around the map, then you can go Rushdown. I kind of feel like if you have to back on D.Va, they won the fight, typically. Um, that's not always the case. There are times in games where I do have to go back on D.Va. And, and then come back from the fountain. Um, but hit the nitrous with the increased speed and everything typically can just get me there in the time that uh, is, is still okay. Like having a five second booster isn't really that useful to me, I found in games. There's not a map large enough where I found that, wow, I really needed this booster cooldown um, and not needed the extra initial speed and extra damage. So hit the nitrous is is definitely my play so rushdown can be used it's not bad but definitely not my favorite and remember diva is more of a bruiser warrior so having extra damage is always good for the more bruiser style of play crash course is a q quest talent uh, the quest is damage enemy heroes with boosters simple enough and reward is after damaging 25 heroes each use of booster lowers its cooldown by one second per hero hit so it's not a bad quest. Um, it kind of can be used like rushdown. I just typically never go it. Once again, I just like the immediate speed speed increase, 
and the extra damage. Pearl Moves is actually not too bad of an ability. Um, so for every one second of damage you take, you increase your movement speed. So you, and this is from all sources of damage. This isn't just heroes. So if you walk into a minion wave and you're just getting hit by all these minions, you can cut off people. Like you can walk in front of them, you can body block them. For your team, you can make it a lot harder for the enemy to uh, get away in, in this regard. Or if you get jumped, it's a really good escape tool. Now, once again, I, I just like hit the nitrous more, but um, I personally would consider grabbing pro moves as like a as a flex pick level one. But I don't think I've ever not gotten hit the nitrous. So it's something to consider. All these talents are good. It's not bad if you grab one over another. But hit the nitrous is my pick for level one with pro moves, kind of being the second one. I tend to like talents that give you the uh, the most options versus being kind of gimmicky one trick use kind of stuff so like rush down is very like one trick use you can use it for chasing but if you get hit ever it doesn't work so there's a lot of situational things where um certain talents i just don't like as much as other ones but these two i i definitely prefer and like i said hit the nitrous is my is my uh, level one talent pick so level four uh there's two that i like to go um i'm just gonna say never grab diverting power where you can't move because the biggest perk of defense matrix is the fact that you can move with the enemy so this is not a good talent because you get the super wide range which is great but then you can't move so if you misplace it at all you're kind of screwed and that's not worth it now you can cancel defense matrix at any time but you know the point of using defense matrix is to block damage so not being able to move does make it a little bit difficult so i just wouldn't go that uh the self uh, destruct charge amount gain losing mech is increased by 30% so if your mech dies you get 60% instead of 30 really not useful for what we're trying to do so just kind of ignore that talent now the two here there's kind of different combination routes you can go I personally always grab fusion generator which is every time an enemy hero deals damage while inside defense matrix diva's self-destruct charge increases by 1% max of 15% charge gain per use this makes you have so many more self-destructs. I, I can get self-destructs whenever I want using this. Uh, it's not that guaranteed, but it does give you 15% um, charge pretty much every single time you use it, as long as you have enemies highlighted. And since you're getting more charge rate, getting your uh, self-destruct ability up more often, that means you have more area denial that you can use. And I just personally prefer that. I feel like having all your abilities active or available to you on, on a more often basis is really, really good. Um, now, this other one I'm going to go over here is get through this, which increases the duration of defense matrix by three seconds. Now, by itself, that's really not the greatest. And fusion generator is just better. But in a level seven talent that you can combo with get through this, um, it can be very good. Now, I personally, this is just a personal thing. You guys can pick and choose whatever you want. Like I've always mentioned in all my guides across the text guides I've done or the other videos, my builds work for me. And they're to make sure you can get the optimal performance out of a hero, but that doesn't necessarily mean it'll work for you. I tend to make my builds geared towards uh, solo queuing, duo queuing, and trio queuing. Five stacks, you could pick and choose different things because you can really select what heroes you're going to want with your with your team. So just keep that in mind when uh, when checking out the, this build and this guide. Uh, that, that, that That's what these builds are, are geared towards more, is more focused on your solo play, what you can do as a hero with your team of people that you might not necessarily know. So um, to show you what I typically go, I'm going to kind of go back and forth on these talents. Um, I'm just going to grab Fusion Generator now. This is my main go-to. This is my 9 out of 10 uh, times I grab Fusion Generator. But get through this will really combo in well the 1 out of 10 times that you will need it. And I'm going to go over that right now. Super talent. So level 7, this is the combo piece for the increase. So for get through this, to get that extra 3 seconds, this is your combo piece. Dazer Zone. Enemy heroes affected by defense matrix are slowed by 20%. Your defense matrix already lasts three seconds, and when they're slowed for 20%, it's really easy to track them within that. So now you have a six second slow you can keep on people, which is insane, that's so strong. I don't always go this um, for one reason, and that is you have four other teammates. So for me, I would go get through this and Dazer Zone. if 
your team does not have slows, CCs, roots, whatever, any form of CC, if your team's really lacking in the CC department, that's when I would grab that because I don't feel that it's necessarily um, necessary to grab that slow combination unless you absolutely need it. And um, it's not bad. Like, like you can disagree with me with, with my level four and seven talent picks and you're like, you can just say, hey, getting the three seconds in the slow is always worth it. And that's fine because that's a really, really good combination of talents. It's just personally what I don't go. And like I said, that that's kind of my, my flex go-to pick, but I only really ever grab it if I don't already have good CC. Now, if you if your only CC is like a Malfruit, then the slow is going to be pretty useful. But if you have other heroes that can slow, or you have like an Alarak that can telekinesis them back, you don't really need uh, the extra slow. This is more if their team is super mobile. If the enemy team is super mobile, you don't have a lot of CC. This can help your team catch up or you can help with disengages a little easier. Uh, what I tend to go is aggression matrix, and that is basic attacks in mech mode against heroes lower the cooldown of defense matrix by 2.25 seconds. So uh, I want you to look at that a little bit differently. So I'm gonna bring up D.Va's um, stats here, and you can bring up stats at any point in game by hitting the C key by default. So we're gonna be looking at attacks per second here, which is four. So she attacks four times every second, okay? So looking at this, basically I want you to look at it as if you attack for one second, your defense matrix goes down and cool down by one second. So if you're at nine seconds and you attack for a second, now you would have been at eight, but now you're going to be at seven. So it kind of gives you that little bump. It just leaves defense matrix up more often, which is going to combo into fusion generator, which is going to charge your E a lot more frequently because you're going to have defense matrix up a lot more often. So those are the two combo pieces at level four. You kind of get your pick your own adventure where I kind of feel like hit the nitrous is your start. And then you can either go in the direction of the slows with get through this. You can go that direction and then for the uh, duration, excuse me. And then you can go dazer zone for the slow. So that's like one direction you can go. Or you start to hit the nitrous, go fusion generator, which will take you this way and then get aggression matrix which will take you kind of on the right path so they're both good there's nothing wrong with either of them i just personally pick one over the other it kind of suits how i play diva a lot more than kind of being that peel target i kind of make her have light peels um and so be able to put on a lot of pressure onto the enemy team so that's why i grab aggression matrix now i'm going to go over nuclear option right now and to the right of the screen right here i'm going to have this video playing and it's the difference between blowing up regularly for four seconds or taking nuclear option, which is increased self-destruct's detonation timer by three seconds. So it's a seven second detonation time, but you increase the damage. So that sounds really good, but you have to have like the most perfect stun stat combo in the entire world for this to even work. So with ETC, like I had mentioned earlier, ETC, Zarya, heroes like that, that can hold heroes in place, self-destruct on a four second timer is really strong because you can actually combo it into something you can't really combo anything in the seven seconds like you would need to mosh pit uh enemy heroes after mosh pits over you would need etc to slide so etc would have to walk in mosh pit then slide and hit everybody for the stun then do the knockback and then have like somebody else slow everyone like an arthas throws a uh w and freezes and roots everybody or a mouth roots everybody and then nuclear option is really viable then but that's not like go it's not going to happen very often you know that's not something you're going to be able to rely on so i just personally don't like nuclear option for those reasons and as you saw in the video to the right well the the time difference is very significant the three seconds increases crazy this is very much a trap talent please don't go this at level 10 we get to pick our ultis both are great so here's my feelings on the ultis bunny hop is incredible in a five stack um the fact that you become unstoppable you're stomping every half second dealing 132 damage at 20 it's just x damage and then you're slowing enemies by 40 percent last four seconds so you're essentially getting eight hits off is what it is um so you can actually look at the number as doubled in terms of seconds so we'll just take level 20 uh at 132 damage you're actually doing 264 damage every second multiplied by four so you're doing you know eight nine hundred damage uh off a of bunny hop 
two enemies, which is a lot of damage at 20, you know? For for a tank, or what's, you know, it's a warrior, I guess, it's more of a bruiser, but for uh, that kind of bruiser, tanky kind of hero, that is a pretty significant damage output to have. The cooldown is 100 seconds, and it is very, very good, but you're definitely going to need heroes that will react in combo, players that will react in combo very well into it. That's why I feel like bunny hop's a lot better in a five stack, where you can communicate with people, hey, I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna bunny hop, and you can even combo it e into uh, the scenario of maybe you bunny hop and then area denial, uh, like area deny them. So you can bunny hop, you're stomping, and you're stomping these guys, and then you booster and you nerf this, and now you're blocking that area, and then you can call down your mech again. So like that's a combination you can do, or you can just bunny hop into somebody so you're bunny hopping and then you just nerf this and then you walk out of there or whatever so those are options for bunny hop which are very very strong um but with that said i personally grab big shot and i'm going to stay in pilot mode to show you guys this so um both alties are used in only one of diva's modes so bunny hop is only usable in mech mode and big shot is only used in pilot mode now I like Big Shot a lot because one, it provides Diva's um, Diva's pilot mode with a lot more bursts. You kind of you kind of become this offshoot assassin where you're not quite an assassin, but your damage output's pretty darn good. And it's on a four second cooldown, which is crazy. And the cooldown of Call Mech, which is your E ability, which starts at 45 seconds, gets reduced by eight for each enemy hit. So every four seconds, you can constantly be reducing Call Mech. A big shot works is it's a point and click target skill shot. It takes a split second to, to fire. So the split second charge time, but uh, it does quite a bit of damage. And the, the animation is actually pretty deceiving. It's pretty quick, but it, it looks pretty deceiving when you're in game when you'll see somebody and you go, oh, oh no, I missed, and then they'll take damage and they're like kind of over here. So uh, I just personally like Big Shot a lot, and just turning off the short cooldown mode, you can just kind of see how fast four seconds feels. So you're kind of running, you're shooting, running away, another pop shot. You know, you, you can you can put out some good damage with this. So I personally like Big Shot uh, as my ulti choice in my solo duo trio queue that tends to work the best. But Bunny Hop is an amazing combo tool, and I think if you're comfortable with maybe your three stack comboing onto it, or if you're in a team of five, I kind of feel like Bunny Hop is the better ulti choice. Um, but for the sake of this guide and the way I do my guides, I'm going to be going Big Shot. That's just a little insight on that. All right, at level 13, uh, we have three different talents to choose from. I'm just going to say ignore expensive plating, not worth it, not even going to go into it really. Um, don't worry about grabbing that one. So you have two options. You have ablative armor and emergency shielding. Emergency shielding is pretty good. It's basically a miniature version of uh, Johanna's level 20 trait or level 20 talent where if you technically die, you gain this really big shield. So this is a mini version of that. It's pretty strong. Um, I kind of think emergency shielding is really good against burst damage comps. So if you get hit by like KT, Jaina, Chromie, even though Triple Mage isn't a, a standard thing, if all of those heroes hit you, Emergency Shielding might actually save you. Um, but if they have some sort of uh, group of two heroes plus that are focused more on burst damage, Emergency Shielding is pretty good for that. Ablative Armor is my go-to at level 13. So damage against Diva's mech that would deal 5% or less of its maximum health uh, are reduced by 50%. This does not decrease the amount of self-destruct charge gain. So it doesn't affect your E, but it does make you significantly tankier. I'm going to be showing that off with Arthas here in a second. Um, so emergency shielding is good against burst. Ablative armor is insanely good against sustained comps. Any any comp that's based on a, auto attacks, like ablative armor, makes you a main tank essentially. You can also do that in burst comps. But if if the enemy team's reliant on burst comps, this won't necessarily uh, ablative armor won't necessarily be that uh, useful to you, where emergency shielding could potentially save you. But ablative armor is kind of my my main pick, and I'll I'll show you why in a second. So I'm gonna toggle on minions here. 
And I'm going to get Arthas up here. And I'm going to let him attack me at first so you can see the damage. Then I'm going to do Defense Matrix. So I'm going to set this. going to hit H. So he starts attacking me. So that's, that's the chunks of health I'm losing. With Defense Matrix on, losing a lot less, right? And now I'm going to going to have him attack me again, going to defense matrix, and then pick ablative armor. And I'm basically not taking damage anymore. I mean, when he hits me here with ablative armor, I, I lose decent chunks, but with both of them combined, I'm really not losing anything. I think I think I'm taking about 20 damage a hit, I believe is is what it what it is at that point. Thank you, Arthas, for helping me out there. So uh, as you can see, ablative armor is really really good against anything auto attack based um vala kind of counters this to a point um at 16 if she grabs manticore the amount of damage she'll be dealing will kind of negate ablative armor but she's kind of my only real exception hero um but most auto attack heroes or most auto attacks in general you can block out with ablative armor so that is something that uh, i recommend taking like i said in terms of burst comps, if you feel like emergency shielding is a better pick, I definitely recommend that as well. So at level 16, we have a lot of interesting choices. Um, the one I'm just going to say don't worry about right now is Nano Weave Suit. Uh, it gives you armor, and that's like the main part of it. Essentially, you can read it here for yourself if you want. I don't really find this to be that big of a deal based on our other choices, so I kind of ignore this one. If you're really wanting to all in into the slow heroes with soft CC, you can grab suppressing fire so your auto attack range is increased in pilot mode and your auto attack slow, which is very strong. You can keep a single target slowed for quite a while. But I, I kind of feel like most of the time you're when you're dying in mech, it's because the enemy team can surround you, so grabbing suppressive fire won't really help you get out. Suppressive, suppressing fire is more of a win more trait where you're already up like four level three to four levels and your your team's just chasing people down constantly maybe you uh fly in with boosters you nerf this and then you just start auto attacking somebody to keep them slowed or keep them within self-destructs uh range that that's also what it could be good for but it's very much you're already ahead by a pretty good margin so you want to grab suppressing fire kind of thing the two i tend to go back and forth uh between is torpedo dash which is the main one i pick up and that grants D.Va's pilot mode a Q, so let's just hop over to that real quick. I'm just going to nerf this and let that fly over there and blow up. So off of your Q, um, D.Va, it's a 12 second cooldown. D.Va gains the torpedo dash ability, allowing her to dash forward and pass through enemies requires pilot mode, which we're in currently. Uh, and I'll, I'll show you that in a second. Uh, I will be picking that up. That is my main go-to Q talent, so or my main go-to level 16 talent. But the other option you have is GG well played, in my opinion, uh, as an overall talent pick. And that is increased pilot mode base attack damage by 75% participating in a takedown while in pilot mode instantly refreshes the cooldown of call mech. So having big shot isn't really necessary if you're going to go GG well played. If you go GG well played, then having bunny hops better because you're going to be in mech more often. Um, the the attack damage increase is actually pretty significant too. Um, I can show you that real quick. So base is 121. Now you're doing 211. So you're actually and you're shooting pretty quickly. You're shooting four times a second still. So your damage output is what is that? 844. Yeah, 844 a second. If you grab GG well played, so you do output quite a bit of damage that way. Like I said, I like to grab Torpedo Dash, so I'm just going to go ahead and grab that right now. And it unlocks a Q, as you can see. It's just a skill shot, allows you to roll, um, which is pretty cool. Toggle cooldowns does not work in pilot mode. This is something broken in try mode, so just kind of something to keep aware. I'll just roll through Arthas real quick so you can kind of see it going through something. So I'll kind of get him over here. And you can just roll through them like that. You can big shot and whatever. You can kind of see like some kind of combination there. You kind of want to just be stutter stepping as much as you can. Um, going in this, in this duration. But you can escape from people like that. So what I like to do with Torpedo Dash. I'll wait till it kind of resets the cooldown just about here. Is I like to self-destruct and then Torpedo Dash backwards. And then big shot. So... 
Uh, th this is kind of how that would work. So you go in, you nerf this, you kind of dash back, and you take a pop, pop shot, and then you can call down your mech again, uh, following up that. So that's that's typically how I like to do the combo with torpedo dash. Um, you can use this as a chase tool as well. So I'll just get get out of that real quick. So if if you are chasing somebody down, you can also use it to kind of dive into them and attack a little more. There's just some uses for torpedo dash. It's pretty standard movement ability. I just find it very useful to uh, have that option. But like I said, GG well played is, is quite strong as well. So level 20, um, if you grab, so this is kind of dependent on what ulti you grab. Uh, if you grab big shot, I don't really recommend getting the upgrade. Uh, the damage is pretty negligible. And I don't typically like knockbacks. I'll pick this one up just to show you real quick, but I never really grab concussive pulse. So it looks pretty cool. It's kind of got a cool little uh, cool little deal there. But I kind of feel like if you're going to grab Torpedo Dash, then there's no reason to grab Concussive Pulse. And I can show you the knockback on Arthas. It's pretty significant. Like, it pushes them back a, a good amount of range. So with your Q combined, you can essentially always escape. Uh, I don't typically like to go that, though. I don't really feel like it's necessary. Um, I really like Mecha Fall. Now... References the Titanfall, which is cool um, by itself, and right over here, real quick, I'm just going to show you a little tiny clip of a glitch where I mecha falled while getting uh, Void Prism, and it's, it's just kind of funny to see it constantly be spinning. Um, but anyway, so um, the the other ulti choice, by the way, if you do grab Bunny Hop, uh, I do really like the increased damage. It's really hard. You're kind of doing this like stutter step kind of thing. Uh, it's kind of hard to get used to, but the extra damage output is beyond worth. It is so strong. So uh, if you do grab Bunny Hop, I, I recommend getting the extra damage if you're stationary. Uh, I can kind of show you how that works at the end, but that's just what I recommend. So Mecha Fall gives your, your E, your Call Mech, range. So that's what I usually go. And as you can see, now you have this range that you can drop for it. And it does, it does damage on impact, where you can drop it down and do some damage. Uh, I'll show a clip at the end where I actually get a kill being aggressive with Mecha Fall. Um, but the other use for Mecha Fall is to get around terrain. So, so say Arthas is attacking us and we're like, oh no, Arthas is attacking us, we need to get out of here. You can drop it through terrain and be on the other side and be totally safe. So that's another use for Mecha Fall. Uh, like I said, I personally like it. Um, the extra burst is nice. The options for a little bit of almost like a, a blink escape is really nice. And um, those are uh, those are just things I like. And it makes your call down mech instant, so you'll instantly teleport in, which can save your life. So I'm just going to show Stop and Pop, uh, the upgrade at level 20 for Bunny Hop real quick. It's, it's kind of hard to do, so I, I might hit a couple of them, but you'll see the damage numbers pop up. Uh, if you see a 132, that means I didn't do it, and if you see like a 300 whatever, then that means I did do it. So I'll try to do it on Arthas here. So you saw a couple of the 329s pop up, and that's just uh, how the ability works. So I'm just hitting S right before I, I hit the ground to, to get those to come up. Now, I haven't really practiced it too much. I don't typically go bunny hop ulti, um, but that's, that's how it works. So you're just kind of hitting S right before you land on the ground and you'll get that extra damage output and it's pretty significant. So now we're just gonna do a quick review of the talent choices. Uh, level one, hit the nitrous. Pro moves is also pretty good. The uh, All of them are, are good selection choices, but hit the nitrous is my favorite with flex and pro moves, though I never really grab anything but hit the nitrous. Level four, you can flex in to get through this, but I mainly go fusion generator. Um, and at level seven, when you get, get through this, you can uh, flex into Dazer Zone, allowing you to have a 6 second 20% slow, which is very, very strong. But I usually go Aggression Matrix to keep your W with uh, having better uptime, and then allowing your E to have better uptime in a result of that. Level 10, both ulti choices are very good. I tend to go Bunny Hop when I'm in a 5 stack, or that's what I at least recommend. Um, but seeing as how I am 90% of the time in a 1-3 to three stack, uh, Big Shot ends up working a lot better because I don't have to rely on my teammates to combo. Ablative armor is also very, very strong as it is very good against auto attacks and sustained base damage comps of the enemy team. 
if the enemy team has a lot of burst, then you can flex into emergency shielding, but, but I typically grab this talent right here. Torpedo dash at 16 just gives you a lot of different options as far as escapes or chasing, engage tools, whatever. Um, I, I like that one the best. If you're winning by three to four levels, you can grab suppressing fire to kind of continue that lead. Or instead of torpedo dash on your on your main talent build, going GG well played is also very helpful. It gives your mech time a lot more uptime. And in going this, you might want to be going bunny hop in the first place because you won't be in pilot mode that often with it. At level 20, mecha fall 100% of the time, all the time, unless you grab the bunny hop ulti, then I recommend getting stop and pop. Just that extra damage is very, very strong and very helpful. And I never recommend going uh, concussive pulse or pew pew pew. So Mecha Falls my go-to 20, and that's all the talents. So I hope this D.Va guide was really helpful to you guys, gets you on a good starting path for D.Va. Always be sure to experiment with talents. Remember what I do and what I say, and what I recommend is based on my testing and the optimal results that I have been able to get um, playing D.Va. Uh, that doesn't mean it'll work for you, but it does work for me, and that doesn't mean it'll work for you, but it does work for me. So I hope it is helpful to you guys. I hope this does kind of give you some insight into D.Va. Once again, we're we are now partnered with Storm Legacy. Be sure to check out all of their content. Hit them up on Twitter, on Twitch, on YouTube, all that stuff. Show them some love. They're an amazing group of people over there. And uh, we'll, we'll be definitely doing more content with them soon. We got some stuff to announce. But for now, uh, just be sure to tune into their YouTube page. Uh, and like I said, I will be uploading these guides still onto this channel. Um, but please be sure to check out stormlegacy.com and everything else that they got going on. All right, guys, that is it for now. This is my D.Va guide. Thanks again for watching, and we will see you next time.